Hey everybody, it's Magus. Thanks for coming back for our monthly update of our Tesla solar panels and power wall system. This one for July 2023. Now this was a busy month. Tesla has updated the app. The graphs look completely different now. I'll show you what's new, what's changed, what's missing, and what's added, and how I feel about that. We'll also go over virtual power plant events, which started in the month of July here for us. And lastly, we'll go over Charge On Solar. Keep on watching, we'll go over it all. Now, one of the new exciting upgrades is that over the past month, Tesla has been updating the energy graphs in the energy tab. You'll see they're much more aesthetically pleasing. They look much nicer. And what you may also notice down below here is that we have a vehicle tab. Now that's the data ad here. I'll go over that in a little bit, but that's an exciting update here. You'll also see that the drop-down menu for the you know day, week, month, year has an added feature to add for go to the specific date. This allows me to go back to like say July 2022 and look at our production versus this month. I think that's a really good feature. Just you know, quickly it lets me look at data to see how it's uh, how it's going this month. One thing that you will notice though is that from the previous graphs is we lost the low average and high data that we used to have on them. Um, basically, we can mouse over and get the low and the high and I can divide the total production by the number of the days in the month, but it just doesn't really make sense why that was removed. It was a, a, you know, a good source of information. I wish they would bring it back kind of like they did with the net grid use numbers. Um, but what you will see that's new here is that vehicle section here. And this is the data add. This basically supplements some of that data that you might see in that charge stat section on the vehicle side of it, but it's bringing it over into the energy side now. Now on these graphs, you'll notice in the solar production and in the grid use tabs, the vehicle data is shaded in red. Now keep in mind, this is only for vehicles on 26.1. If you have a vehicle on the FSD beta branch like we do, that's not included in this vehicle section yet. I hope that they update that and you know put both of them in there. And that kind of has a further question for me is, are they all gonna be considered one vehicle or are they gonna shade it differently for the two vehicles? Guess we'll just have to see. You know, for now though, just checking out these new graphs, they are still a little bit buggy. I think they're kind of a work in progress. Um, as you can see, we were on charge on solar here. Uh, basically the char car was charging fully and the AC kicked on and we're on charge on solar. So basically the vehicle should only be from solar. You can see here the power walls kicked in and then the source of power shows power wall. So that may or may not be correct. Hopefully they'll iron out some of these bugs but basically this is an awesome aesthetic upgrade so far and we're happy to see it. July brought in the start of the virtual power plant season for us in 2023. Now you might remember from last year that the virtual power plant events were quite lucrative for us. At $2 per kilowatt hour, we ended up making about $600 during the about 14 or so events last year in 2022. So I was quite excited to see them starting again here in 2023. Now we started with two shorter events, 48 minutes and 75 minutes, and then had one longer event that was six to 9 p.m. I'm really liking the shorter events because basically what this does is it allows us to empty one of our three power walls to the grid. They essentially discharge at about 15 kilowatt during these uh, events. So we're emptying one power wall to the grid, getting paid about 25 bucks. And then from the, the rest of the night, we're using the two other power walls and staying completely off the grid. And that to me is perfect. It's a nice balance of helping the grid in a time of need, while at the same time, just staying off the grid ourselves and making a little bit of money. Now, one of the nice things that Tesla did when they uh, updated the graphs is they actually added a section here that made it a little bit clearer as to what you've sent back to the grid during a virtual power plant event. Still wish it just showed up on the main screen of the virtual power plant section, but hopefully that'll come in a future update. But what you can see here is we've sent back during these three events, a little over five hours or so of um, virtual power plant events is 63.5 kilowatt hours. Now that's about $125. So basically our power walls have made us $125 in the past week. That's amazing. If you want to learn more about virtual power plants, I'll link up above here with a video I made last year, just kind of explaining the basics and all that. Um, but definitely join. They're an awesome way to just supplement the grid with your clean solar.
Lastly, in July, one of the exciting updates here is Charge on Solar. Uh, so we got that on July 27th specifically, and I'll note that date because I think that months from now, we're gonna look back at that and go, hmm, that was really a change in our behaviors here. Um, basically, Charge on Solar allows you to take that excess solar electricity that you would normally be sending back to the grid and instead preferentially send it back to your vehicle. Um, I have noticed a couple things, and I kind of mentioned it in my previous video, is that I really think there should be a preference setting for the power walls in the vehicle so that maybe you can fill up your power walls to a set percentage and then turn on charge on solar. I prefer to have my power walls full before I'm, you know, sending the excess electricity back to the cars, but that's just something that, you know, uh, personal preference here. But I do think that July 27th is going to be a very distinct change in what you see going back to the grid for us. Basically, we have two EVs here in addition to the power wall. So we have about 200 kilowatt hours of uh, battery storage in the garage. You know, only 40 kilowatt hours of that is gonna be the bi-directional, you know, we put it in, can use it for the house. The 150 kilowatt hours sitting in the Y and the three, you know, are just gonna be able to be used for driving. So that's why I'd like to preferentially put it into the power wall first, just because I can really use it better there and utilize it better, say, if there were a virtual power plant event. Um, but hopefully we'll see some more updates on that one into the future. Now, Tesla has continued the $500 off if you're ordering a solar panel or a solar roof system. I'm gonna highly, highly encourage you just to sign up, use my referral, I'll link it up here, and just have them come out and do a site assessment. It costs $100 for everything up until it's installed and the city comes out and inspects it and you're good to turn it on and start producing electricity. Everything up until that point is $100. Just have Tesla come out, do a site assessment, figure out if it's the right thing for you. I think it will be, trust me, but make sure you use my referral link there. It'll save you $500 on your system and let me know if you joined. Thanks, uh, let's go over the data. As always, starting with the data, we'll take a look at the house usage first. Now in June, we used 1,327.6 kilowatt hours. In July, that was way up to 1,965.1 kilowatt hours. Our average daily use went from about 44 kilowatt hours in May all the way up to 63 kilowatt hours in June. This is a huge bump, but we finally are getting our summer temperatures, you know, up into the hundreds, 110s here. Um, and we are using the AC a couple more hours a day, so it totally makes sense. I said it last month, I'll say it again, change your AC air filters, change all your air filters, make it run as efficiently as possible. We're just having some very heavy use days when it gets super hot here, and then we also have had to charge the cars here. You might see in my graphs here, I have a high use day of 122 kilowatt hours here. So make sure everything's running as efficiently as possible. Now, uh, with the charge stats, uh, we did some stuff with moving the cars around on accounts. Um, so I don't have the full charge stats for the month here, but basically looking back at charge point, I can conglomerate all of them together. We used about 430 kilowatt hours at home to charge both of the cars. Used about uh, 410 kilowatt hours, I believe, in June last month. Um, so it's about a quarter of our electricity usage. It was about a third last month, but that's purely just because we didn't use as much. Now, last year in July, we used 1,749.1 kilowatt hours, about 200 kilowatt hours less than this year. You know, it was pretty hot back then too, and I looked back at the history here, and I think that this is mainly just gonna be charging. Um, basically, in July of 2022, we had a new baby in the family. We weren't really traveling much, you know, kind of just at that point too scared to go anywhere, um, versus now we're just trying to get out of the house as much as possible, so our traveling has increased a great amount. Now, um, will this affect our grid use numbers later on, you know, in the, in the month here? I guess we'll check it out and see. But Next up will be solar numbers. In June, we produced 2,227.1 kilowatt hours. In July, that was down a little bit to 2,212.5 kilowatt hours. Now, these are two nearly identical months for production. We're averaging a little over 70 kilowatt hours per day here, but you can start to see there's a slow march downwards as the summer solstice has already passed. Um, basically, we're going to have a lot of hot very hot, cloudless, sunny days here. Uh, these are the dog days of summer. We're gonna get a lot of production here, but it is going to start to quickly nosedive as the uh, fall progresses here. Production numbers will drop very precipitously. You'll be surprised. 
Um, so enjoy the numbers now while we still have them. They're going to go away quickly as the days get shorter. Now looking at July, we produced uh, 2,260.9 kilowatt hours last year, 2,212.5 kilowatt hours this year. Again, nearly identical months within about 2% of each other. Um, now you will notice going forward that there are some vehicle charging stats on the monthly uh, solar production numbers here for July. Keep in mind those don't contain both of our cars on this, so just disregard these. They, they don't really mean anything at this point. We'll go over Powerwall numbers next, and obviously you remember I said the AC usage was way up. So when you look at the numbers here, we were at 572.9 kilowatt hours discharged in June from the Powerwalls, and that is way up to 873 kilowatt hours discharged in July. The average daily use has bumped up to 28 kilowatt hours, which is about 70% of the three power walls capacity. Basically with these hundreds, hundreds and tens, it never really cools down at night. So our AC is running quite a bit more overnight. So it equals to about two hours or so more AC usage overnight than we had in June, which was averaging around 20 kilowatt hours or so per night of usage. Um, now last year in June, we discharged 821.4 kilowatt hours from the power walls. Looking at this year, 873 kilowatt hours, the only difference here is virtual power plant events this month. So we discharged 63 and a half kilowatt hours. So if you were to take that away, these two months are nearly identical. Um, pretty awesome to see the solar production was right there. And essentially the you know, power wall discharge too is just about right there, even with the house usage being way off. Um, now we only had one power outage this month. It's the first one we've had in a couple months here. However, this was another planned upgrade by PG&E. We got a letter from them a couple weeks in advance saying they were gonna do some upgrades and we'd be out from eight to 4 p.m. They only had us out from eight to 11. And honestly, I saw the PG&E boom truck come by and then lights flickered about five minutes later. That was the only reason I knew the power went out. Otherwise, just the phone notification was the only thing. And we were just, you know, like normal, nothing, nothing happened. We had power all day. So again, power walls are awesome. Drum roll, please. Now the exciting net grid use numbers for June were negative 830.8 kilowatt hours, a fantastic month. In July, that's down to a paltry 132.1 kilowatt hours net sent back to the grid. Oofta. Now, considering we produce the same amount of solar essentially in June and July, this really just goes to show you how much of a difference the weather can make. There were a couple other factors I'll go over here, but it's mainly weather. We hit that 100, 110, and our AC is set to 72 and was basically running nonstop. I looked up the data from our thermostat and it looks like it actually ran about 150 hours more in July than it did in June at about four kilowatt per hour. It's about 600 kilowatt hours extra in usage. The other change here is gonna be charge on solar. Granted, this was just a few days at the end of the month here, but I think moving forward, sending that excess electricity to the car instead of the grid is going to decrease our numbers you know, for net grid use pretty drastically. Now looking at last July, we were at negative 445.7 kilowatt hours back to the grid. I think mainly here it's just the differences in driving habits. It's only a couple hundred kilowatt hours and really at the end of the day, those 300 kilowatt hours add up to maybe $15 in a check at the end of the year. So I'm really not that concerned. We're keeping our house at 72 both of these months here. We're filling our EVs, both of them, um, you know, from our excess solar electricity here, and we're continuing to send back excess credits. It really doesn't get any better than that. And as always, let's take a look at our self-powered numbers this month. This is not a good one this month. We're at 92% self-powered. Uh, obviously, we had a little bit on the grid there. It was a family situation where I needed to have both of those cars charged, so that used a bit. Also, it was just hotter where we just had a couple nights where we needed to charge and we needed to use the AC a ton and just depleted the batteries. 122 kilowatt hours, as you saw on that one day, is just you know, the solar and the power walls don't cover that combined. So obviously sometimes you're gonna need a grid. You just have this special situations. I don't wanna do it that often, but sometimes you need to, and we have all those excess uh, credits basically so that it, it doesn't matter at all. Now looking at the numbers, 49% from solar this month, which is down from 56% last month. And power wall usage is actually the 43%, same as last month. 
Um, the difference there being that 8% in July, but like I said, it was just a situation where we needed the cars to be filled and uh, a couple other things here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I really hope you uh, get a solar panel or a solar roof system here. And if you're interested, uh, want to get some power walls too, keep on watching my videos. Let me know. Like, subscribe, comment, use my referral. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope you enjoy. See you next time.